In this video, you will learn my method for baking sourdough bread in a Romer top clay baker. Hi, I'm Ron and thanks for clicking on this video. And if you're new to my channel, please check out my other videos on YouTube.com. Lately, while baking oblong-shaped loaves of sourdough bread, I've used cast iron bread pans. My cast iron bread pans are 9 by 5 in size, and I've had to reduce the size of my recipe to get the dough to fit in my bread pans. In an attempt to bake larger sized loaves of sourdough bread, I switched to the Romer Top Clay Baker and I've been more than satisfied with the results. If you've ever used a Romer Top Clay Baker, please leave a comment below the video and share your experience. All right then, let's get started. Sometimes I feed my starter in the morning and mix my dough around noon. And sometimes, like today, I mix my dough first thing in the morning, having fed my starter late last night. My two loaf recipe calls for 900 grams of bread flour, 600 grams of water, 200 grams of sourdough starter, and 20 grams of salt. I use either sea salt or kosher salt. This is a 70% hydration dough. I've often encouraged people to have multiple containers of their sourdough starter for insurance safety. I usually keep one or two jars of sourdough starter in the fridge and one on the kitchen counter, which is only fed when I make sourdough. I rotate the jars from fridge to kitchen counter every week or two. Here I'll demonstrate the rotation. This is the jar of starter I used this morning to mix my sourdough. There's about 50 grams of sourdough starter remaining in the jar, which I'll transfer to a clean new quart jar. Put the lid on tight and put it in the fridge for a week or two until the next time I rotate my sourdough starter. And here is a very cold jar of about 50 grams of sourdough starter that has been in the fridge for the past two weeks. I'll feed it 10 grams of flour and 10 grams of water so it has some food while it wakes up. This jar of starter with a loosely fitted lid will sit on the kitchen counter until the next time I make sourdough. If I'm not going to make sourdough for more than three days, the jar will go back in the fridge.
It's time to finish mixing today's sourdough. I use this proofing box for bulk fermentation, which is the time between mixing the dough and shaping the dough. Ideally, I try to keep the internal temperature of the dough between 75 and 78 degrees Fahrenheit. After mixing the sourdough and at 30 minute intervals, I perform two or three stretch and folds, followed by two or three coil folds. There's a video on my YouTube channel which demonstrates these folding methods. Stretch and fold and coil fold have been completed. The sourdough rested for a few hours until it increased in volume by one third. It's now time to pre-shape, shape, place the sourdough in bannetons and into the fridge for overnight fermentation. I'll weigh each loaf to ensure they are the same size. Here I am demonstrating the final shaping of the dough. I begin by using some flour off my workbench to dust the banneton. I use the least amount of flour I can get by with and still not have my dough stick. So I take the round, I flip it over and pull one end to the middle, push down lightly, flip it around and then I take the edge and go all the way across the top and with the palm of my hand, seal the edge, just like you would with a baguette. There. End of the banneton. Cover it with a shower cap. And it'll go into the fridge overnight. Okay, let's do that again. Another banneton. Again, the flour off my workbench. 
and the banneton, shake it around. I don't want a lot of excess flour, so I dump out the extra. Get my dough, flip it over, pull the top edge halfway, just past halfway, push it in gently with the fingertips, and then pull the edge all the way across the top to the other edge. Seal it with the palm of my hand. Again, just like you do with a baguette. There you go. Okay, end of the banneton. Cover it with a shower cap. Perfect. And into the fridge for overnight fermentation. It's the following day and time to bake the sourdough in the Romatov clay baker. And I began by soaking the clay baker in cold water for at least 30 minutes. My clay baker has a glazed surface on the bottom piece, but some clay bakers do not have the glaze. Clay bakers with the glaze are most often used for meals other than bread. This is the only clay baker I own, and I only use it to bake bread. One way to soak a clay baker would be to put both the top and the bottom in a bucket of cold water. I find it easier to simply put the clay baker in the kitchen sink and fill both the top and bottom with water as pictured here. After the clay baker is soaked in water for at least 30 minutes, I cut a piece of parchment paper in half Then I loosen the edges of the dough in the banneton so that it comes out easy. Use the parchment paper, flip it out onto the table, grab a razor blade and one big slash right down the middle at a slight angle. and then some decorative slashes on the side and then into the roamer top put the lid on and into the oven here's a close-up of the sourdough just before going into the oven the roamer top clay baker is cold the kitchen oven is cold after placing the roamer top in the kitchen oven I'll set the temperature for 450 degrees Fahrenheit and the timer for one hour. The sourdough has been in the oven for one hour. Let's see how it looks. Oh my, that bread is absolutely beautiful and it smells amazing. Now to get the bread out of the clay baker, which is still very, very hot. And then I'm going to remove the parchment paper from the bread. Comes off fairly easy. The bread's still hot. And now I'm going to place the bread only back into the oven at a reduced temperature to 400 degrees for an additional 12 minutes. The bread is finished baking. It's time to check the internal temperature. Anything over 200 degrees is good. 203, perfect. The clay baker allows me to bake larger loaves of bread like this one today than would fit in my five by nine cast iron bread pan. Since I only have one clay baker, I'll have to wait until it cools before I soak it in cold water to bake bread again. I'll post the recipe for the sourdough below the video in the comment section. If you enjoyed this video, please click the like button, the little hand, along with the subscribe tab and notification bell, and leave a comment. Thanks again for watching, and make it a great day.